All right, hey everyone. Let me switch over to my face. Hey, here we go. Whoa, double. Okay, so today we're gonna be doing things a little bit different. Um, today uh, we are going to be working on uh, painting some miniatures. Let me see if I can increase the brightness on this because this looks a little on the dark side. Um, oh shoot, there it is. Advanced settings, brightness. Yeah, let's kick that up. Oh yeah, look at that. It looks like I actually have a table. Boom. All right. So, uh, today I'm going to be taking a little break from, uh, from the normal, uh, woodcut to, uh, do a little bit of model making and, uh, painting and assembly. So, I guess on the making part that isn't so true because the models are already made. Uh, but I'm going to show you how I go about, uh, finishing them off, uh, for the final product. So, um, so first of all, uh, well, besides these, I should say these are a special case. Let's set these aside. And so in the instance of this little guy who, here, let's see if I can just assemble this really quick. I'm not quite done painting them and that's what we're going to do, be doing on this live stream so you can see, but this is what it will look like when he is done. Oop. There he is, and he's got a little sword right here. He's got this little sword with a little divot that goes into the back here. So it can hang on the back of them. Oh, if I can figure it out. Which way does this go in? Oh, does it go up? Oh, which way does it go? Oh no, I think it goes this way. Hey, there it goes. So he'll look like that. Uh, when he is all when it's all said and done um, so this thing actually started out as uh, this thing's 3d printed um, so when it came out of the 3d printer uh, like for instance here I'm just gonna disassemble him really quick uh, for instance the base the base took me a few tries to get right um, something in there. Hold on, let me... There we go. There we go. So, the base took me a few times to get right. The first time it printed, this is all that printed. <laughs> so, uh, it fell off the base while I was trying to print it. Uh, and then this is all that managed to... Actually, it, print, it prints this way. So, I, I have a resin 3D printer, which prints a little bit different than what you maybe know of with the filament ones that kind of print. Um, uh, a filament 3D printer is, you almost think like a glue gun. Like, it has like a plastic feed uh, of the filament. It's like a plastic filament that feeds through a nozzle that melts into the place where it needs to be. Mine's different in that mine is resin, so that when it prints... It's actually a, a table or a, a bed that, just like this, like dips down, ugh, that dips down 
into a vat of resin and then slowly pulls out the object because there is a light from underneath that is flash curing the resin. So it's just slowly pulling an object out of the, out of the resin. It's kind of cool to watch. Um, and so uh, this one, this was the original base. It fell off. This is all that printed. I tried to print it again. It got a little bit better. Uh, but if you can see, it, uh, it eh, might be hard to see on the camera. But it didn't print. You can see like this side's a lot skinnier than that side. It didn't print evenly. So, but uh, third time's a charm. And I got it to print. That's what this is, the base. And it is ready to go. Uh, something that you have to do after you're done printing these things is there are these supports. Whoop. These little supports right here that helps so that the print doesn't fall off of the off of the the, the base or the the plate so these are easy enough just to break off i also use like these little wire trimmers um but yeah just break those off um and you are good to go so this next part though this goes for if you if you have a 3d printer or not and you just get like miniatures like this um, these are handy in that they came like ready to paint these are primed and ready to go uh, that's not always the case uh, sometimes you have to do a little prep work and so in the instance for this one prep work had to be done so i i only have two here to show you but i have a what is this a, a 400 grit sanding block it's kind of spongy it's, uh, for wet or dry sanding um 400 grit it's getting pretty fine uh if you want to use anywhere up to like 120 grit is pretty good for getting rid of any like any extra marks or divots or something that uh, that's on your uh, piece that you want to paint uh, and then it's good to then use a range so I use a range from 400 all the way up to 2000 now this one's a 1000 I have here really soft uh, it's really great for kind of almost just like polishing off a, uh, a piece that you are going to paint so we're gonna skip that whole bit and uh, uh, they've already been sanded they've actually already been primed so these these guys are, re are primed they're ready to be painted these guys have already been painted uh, I am gonna paint a little bit more of this base though so I'm gonna do that right now now with this base it's supposed to be like just a stone pathway now what I have already done is painted it in a gray like a uh, oh here let me show you what paints I'm using I used a stonewall gray and darkened it a little bit so oh and I am using uh, I guess I put this in the description too I am using uh, is it Vallejo Vallejo game colors or game color so I use this Oop, I think this is backwards for you all let me flip it flip vertical whoop nope wrong way oh god uh sorry flip vertical I need to flip horizontal hey there it goes so this is Stonewall Gray, um, and I'm actually going to go ahead and use some of this to kind of, I'm going to pop out maybe a little, like maybe do what it's called a dry brush over this just to kind of pop out some of those, uh, some of the stones. Um, maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't. Uh, this is all acrylic based ink, so it's pretty forgiving that if I don't like it, I can just paint over it and try it again but I'm gonna give it a shot so I have my painting tray right here
painting tray with uh, actually here I'm gonna put just a teeny 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 tiny bit of water um, into a tray like the specific tray that I'm going to be putting my paint in now this is just to extend the paint um, that I'll be using on the um, ugh, on the base a little bit more so just to help keep it wet acrylic tends to dry a little quick which is fine but I want this Just kind of wetting, wetting the inside of this. Just dipping it in my cup of water. Got my cup of water, which is near my computer. It's making me really nervous. <laughs> just dipping it in my water and just kind of wetting uh, the palette area where it's going to be. So I'm going to shake up my paint a little bit. And I'm just going to put a little drop in there. Now, since um, I don't, I normally like to modify my paint a little bit, maybe add a little bit of a color. And you know what? Here, maybe I'll add just just a pinch of uh, of black. There, just a dot of black. Um, now, for this next part, I would suggest you have a paint knife or something to stir it. Um, I'm going to use my brush. You know, probably it's it's definitely not the best tool because then you just get a bunch of paint clogged up into your brush but um, it is an option if you are cheap like me and you don't want to buy uh, or don't want to replace I should say <laughs> your your paint knives so all right that's looking good now my brush is loaded up and it is ready to go but I don't want just to go in there and glob uh, I don't want to be globbing paint onto this so I'm actually gonna start on my paper towel and this being a dry brush I want it to the point where it nearly looks like all the paint is off of it and then I'm just gonna like drag it across Making light contact. That's looking pretty good. Now since this was a dry brush uh, and a very thin layer, that's going to dry pretty quick. Um, you can kind of see, I'm trying not to get a, like a reflection on it, and it might not show up on camera. But I have a, a few depths of color going on right now. Uh, you can kind of see like a darker gray, a medium gray. And then for my next one, I'm actually going to use a brighter one. To pop out like a highlight. So. Clean off my brush a little bit. Dip it in my water. Get rid of some of that extra water in my brush. Alright, yeah, that is much lighter.
that's looking good to me. Yeah, this light here is pretty bright, so it's hard. It's kind of hard to see uh, the change in detail on this. Um, but I am liking those highlights. I kind of want to hit it though with just one. It might just be just plain black. Just one more, one more layer, just to really pop out that contrast. black paint on here. Now maybe I'm going to regret this. I hope there's only one way to find out. <laughs> Ooh, no, you know what? I think I really like that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, you can, it's showing up a little bit better on camera now too. You can see like all the differences of the rock. It makes it, ma it makes it look a little more worn. So, all right, I think that is ready to go. Um, now for this next part, um, I'm gonna go ahead and insert the 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 model I've been working with into the base. Now, this base is pretty firm enough that I don't think I will need to add glue, uh, but it's always an option. Now, the glue that I have currently on hand um, is, uh, actually here, you know what, before I do that, take that back, before I do that, what I am going to do is I'm going to take some, just some black. go and you know what I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of gray to it too I could add white but this gray has a little bit of texture to it I like it so add a little bit of gray and I'm just gonna go around the outside of this base um, just so it's nice and finished off going around the outside trying to not go into the detail of the uh, of the brick itself this is just for the outside ring and uh, I guess while I'm doing this I mentioned in the uh, in my supplies list that's floating above my head right now uh, the kind of paints that you'd want to use uh, I specifically mention soft body acrylic or just paints that are specifically made for models uh, such as this um, I would suggest acrylic base uh, enamels also exist but they are a whole different game um, but the reason why you want soft body acrylics is because the pigments okay I shouldn't say like I know exactly like 100% all the details that go into making soft body acrylics but I know that the pigments that they use to create these paints um, they're 
grounded a little bit more fine, from what I understand. Grounded a little bit more fine, and that allows you to paint them, uh, paint it a little bit thinner, and without a whole lot of, uh, without a whole lot of, uh, brush strokes. So, you know, in this case, I'm just doing like a nice flat, thin layer. And that is looking good all the way around. Cool. Wash off my brush. Now you do not want to leave your brush in the water. I always, after I'm done cleaning mine out, I'll go over it with the paper towel just to pull out all the extra moisture and shape, shape my brush with my fingers. So this one's a flat, comes to a point, or not a, a point, but you know, it's got a nice flat edge to it, and I want to help keep that brush nice, so um, keep the keep the shape with my fingers like that and I'm ready to move on so um, so the next step I mentioned I'm going to go ahead and start assembling the piece so I'm gonna start by putting the model into the base okay step one complete we did it stream over no, not really. <laughs> so, boom. There's that part. Um, this next part, I am going to glue. Now, I don't know if this would be the best glue to use. Um, but I, I have on hand Gorilla Glue. So, Gorilla Glue, uh, I mean, it's a super glue. I'm sure it's popular. Everyone knows what Gorilla Glue is at this point, I'm sure. Uh, you have to be careful though uh, because Gorilla Glue when it dries it expands so I don't want it to expand and move things um, there are probably better glues I could be using but I'm gonna go ahead and use this and just apply a very small amount a very very small amount Everything has cat hair on it here because it's getting warm and my cat is shutting. So I'm just going to put a tiny, just like, I'm just going to tap it with the glue there. And tap it with the glue there. And and I'm just going to paint the inside of this with water. Um, from what I understand, Gorilla Glue is activated with water, so I don't know. This should work. <laughs> like a little ridge uh, on the shoulders here. I'm going to put a little bit above that ridge. There we go. Cool. there gonna dab it with the paper towel there we go all right all right now putting this back on okay that is done 
And for the next part, uh, I'm going to put the head on. And so for the head, this guy here, I'm just going to put, again, a very small amount. At the very, there's like, uh, there we go, just right inside there. Okay. And I'm actually like, that was still a small amount, but I'm being paranoid here because I want this to look good. I'm going to take out some of that. Okay. accidentally throw my brush and then I'm going to put a little bit of water on here Ugh, I'm still a little paranoid I'm just gonna take out a little bit more of that glue like there's barely any in there but I'm still like man I spent so much time on this like I'd rather there be not enough than too much because I can always like if it's not enough and I have to like take it off and apply more I can okay so glue in there and now it's going on the base and there he is um, he does have a little sword that goes with him, uh, but this this is it needs just a tiny bit more detail uh, painted on it. So I'm gonna do that next while this part is drying. Be careful to pick it up from the base while everything else is drying. Okay. All right, now time for this teeny tiny sword here. So first of all, I need to look up a reference photo. Um, Okay, so it looks like it has a few cracks going through it. Um, and there's also different versions of it, so I have to kind of have to decide about which version that I want. Um, So, I don't know if that's going to show, but yeah, here we go. So you can kind of see, like, it's got a little bit, a few lines going through it. Um, so that's not going to be too difficult. So, I'm going to go ahead and add just some little cracks to it right now. Now, I want a small pointed brush. might be able to actually use some of that uh, black that I used on the side of the base. Yeah, that should work. So, for doing small detail stuff like this, it's best... Um, you know, if you're anything like me, you can get a little shaky. So I like to keep my, uh, what do you want to say, uh, I'm blanking right here, like the, 
like the heels or whatever, or the bottom of your hands uh, planted, whether it be, you know, maybe against against your chest and you're like painting something or just braced up against things. So I'm using my table right here. So I have it braced up against the table. I have my image I'm basing it off of right here, right next to me. Being careful not to use too much paint. next crack I'm actually going to um, split the line a little bit there we go man I got some epic music going on right now Now be extra careful not to touch any of the areas you just painted. Now I'm gonna paint like the uh, just the bottom of the sword. I'm gonna just, I just want to darken that up. My paint's starting to get a little thick. I need to add a little bit more water to it. Now you don't want to completely saturate your your paint. Um, acrylic can kind of degrade the more thinned out it is with water. All right, so there we go. I got my little crack details on the sword. 
on the front and the back, even though the back, since it's going to be on his back, uh, might not even see it. That's okay. I know it's there, and it's just the small details interest me. <laughs> Alright, I like this song, but it might not be the best song to paint to. So we're going to move to the next one. Alright, and of course, at any point during this, if anyone has any questions, comments, if I'm too loud, too quiet, music's too loud, too quiet, please let me know. I'd also love to see if you guys are working on anything at home. Um point of Artful Connections is to kind of, you know, not just to watch us work on art uh, during live streams, although if you enjoy doing that, thank you. We, we love having you here. But uh, no, we want to encourage art making uh, in our community. Um, just something that we can all do together. So, if you have been working on something, we'd love to see it. Send it to the Art Force Iowa page. Um, I'm going to be still doing this until 1230, so don't go anywhere just yet. Um, I guess, you know, it is halfway through the stream, so I can do my pluggables. For, for anyone who has to leave early, um, unfortunately I couldn't think of a new green screen gag this week. So, it's just going to be, what is this? Nope, that's the starting up one. Nope. Uh, there it is. So, yes. Oh, I'll do a little stretch because I've been hunched over this stuff. Um, check out artforceiowa.org uh, for any updates. See what they're about. Donate. Uh, toasterpress.com. That is my printmaking uh, business that I have. Here, sorry. I'm, my chair is a little high. There we go. Printmaking side business that I have. That I have. Um, uh, you've seen me. If you've tu if if this, I'm assuming this isn't your first time tuning in. So, um, uh, yeah, you've seen me do my wood carvings. Uh, sorry, I like I went down and then my green screen decided to go nuts. Guess I'm going back up. There we go. Um, and. Uh, my Instagram and Facebook is at Toaster Press, so please give those a check out. Uh, give Art Force Iowa some love. And back to the show. Boom. There it is. Alright, so while the glue is drying on those, the paint is drying on my little sword, I'm actually going to move on to uh, these little miniature dudes. So, first things first, I just want to get down some base colors. Um, usually when you go into this, uh, you probably want to have some sort of idea already planned out about uh, how you want their color scheme to be. Uh, but per usual, I think I'm just going to wing it. Which is not the best idea. Don't do what I'm doing. Per usual. Don't do what I'm doing. Have an idea. Uh, look up... Um, you know, look up sources. Uh, get a good color scheme in mind. Uh, I'm just going to start with the flesh tone. So, this is a character that I am using in my current Dungeons & Dragons campaign. And he is... Uh, kind of like a half giant they're, they're called goliaths but he is very paled skin so i'm actually going to use this bone white bone white it's kind of like a brownish grayish white so uh, all right so then i am going to pick let's see which brush which brush should i use Maybe since a lot of the details are tiny, I might just go in with the brush I'm currently using. It's this very fine detail brush here. Uh, and... Get 
get into there and just start painting. Uh, so like the head, you don't have to worry about the details of the face just yet. So all of the head is just going to be this color. And I'm making sure I paint this on very thinly just because if I go too thick with it I could lose detail in the piece and I definitely do not want that. So if I got too much paint all I gotta do is just you know maybe use some on my paper towel or even paint it onto my palette that I'm using. Um, If I do use too much paint, I can always just, I like to clean off my brush a little bit, use a little bit of water, and then just go back through with my paintbrush again, and just keep moving the paint around. Maybe move it from the areas where I have too much to some areas where I don't have enough. song I just skipped. Let's just go to the next one. Alright, so I have the first coat of paint on my piece. And it is looking good. So, or on the face, I, I guess I should say. I still need to cover the hands. He's got some exposed knees and some forearms, it looks like. So I'm going to do those. Um, again, making sure I don't have too much paint. I don't want to saturate the piece. I mentioned before that the pieces of I'm, I'm already working I'm working with right now they've already been primed now you can get like paint on primer um, which might be a little redundant but uh, the uh, the kind that I use on my pieces is just your average local hardware store uh, spray can like spray paint primer um, and, uh, matte spray uh, matte spray primer and uh, it is great for uh, just apply applying nice even thin layers of primer you don't want to like shove the can right into what you're working on it's best to spray it from you know, maybe like 12 to 18 inches away and just lightly mist what you're working on and go over it a couple times rather than just blast the thing with paint. Ugh, sometimes you get in difficult spots like this where I gotta paint the back of this guy's leg but there's so much stuff in the way. It's not making for great streaming right now. I'm showing you right up this guy's tilt. <laughs>
So, all right, the legs are painted, and the last thing I got to do is the hands. And then, oh, the hands and the arms. Yep, forgot the arms. So, again, this is just the first layer, too. I'll probably go in with the second layer uh, before I even start adding details. And that goes with everything, not just the flesh tone. That goes with everything. Um, all of the clothes, the weapon, the base, everything that goes with it. I'm going to want to coat in more than one layer of paint. Um, it's just good to build up layers. Uh, so you get maybe just a little, you know, so you start building depth for your piece. And see, like, you don't gotta be a, uh, oh, half, uh, I missed the halfway green screen. I couldn't think of a new green screen, green screen gag for, uh, for this week. So it was just my, uh, it was my Christmas card again <laughs> with my cat. Uh. So, the figure that I'm currently painting is a Goliath Barbarian from uh, the Dungeons & Dragons series. Um, and I'm just, uh, these, the, the, this figure that I bought, it came pre-primed, which is awesome. And I'm just going through and adding my first coat of paint just to establish a base layer. Um... And you don't have to be a big old dork like me to play and play like Dungeons and Dragons or any kind of board games to uh, have an excuse to paint miniatures. Like maybe you just like making scenery or something. It doesn't even have to be people. It could be places. I know some people who do buy these figurines and then what they like to do is to build um, uh, like, you know, big landscapes like with people... Uh, or maybe it's like like a war scene or you know just like a village and they'll enter them into contests and stuff without even using them to you know play the game that they are meant for and that's totally fine once it's yours you can do whatever you want So, ugh, just getting inside of this axe has been is a little tough without touching anything else. See, like I have, I have terrible shakes. So a lot of these uh, really small details are pretty difficult for me. But you know, if I use good technique. And I keep trying, you know, I can get it to where it needs to be. I realize I'm maybe not painting the most exciting things first. Alright, there we go. So now he's got his skin tone, which he is very pale in the first place, and he still is. <laughs> so, kind of a cool thing with this figure um, is his axe. Uh, I guess you can't see it close up. Uh, his axe kind of has this clear plastic thing over it, almost like there's flames or something coming off of it as, as he's swinging it. Um, these things can be a little bit difficult to paint because, uh, you know, not all paints are, uh, they're not very, or they can be opaque, which diminishes the, uh, the, the, the transparency of this cool little uh, effect right here. 
So what I can do is, you know, unless I find like a good transparent paint, um, you know, maybe I'll have to just try to water something down and hope that works. Do like a little wash over it. Um, I feel like with this one, I kind of want it to be maybe like a blue rather than like a like a red flame. Um, Goliaths are known for they're kind of like mountain dwellers um, and known to be in cold climates. So maybe it's like a cold flame or something. I don't know. But uh, um, so the next part I'm gonna do. Hmm, do I want leather brown or beastie brown? You know, I'm gonna use leather brown. Yeah, leather brown, yeah. There we go. And I always, I don't want to use too much when I'm when I'm, you know, it's like in my paint palette, it's just little drops. You don't want too much. Um, you don't need too much. They're very small objects. <laughs> you don't need to go nuts with the, uh, with the paint. So, okay. I left that into the water a little bit too long. So I'm just going to take it out. You know, actually I'm going to put a little bit of water in my, my paint palette. Looks like we got a little bit less than 10 minutes, so please, if you got any questions, comments, anything, uh, put them in the chat, and hopefully I will notice them and read them. So, okay. So I have my leather brown on here. I'm just going to go ahead and do his armor, like his... Uh, Kind of almost looks like bear skin armor. Um, you know what? I might actually be able to use a bigger brush for this. Because this is a lot broader areas. So, just going to clean off this brush pretty good. So the paint doesn't dry in it. Remove the water. Sharpen the... Or I want to say like, uh, fix the shape of the brush before I'm done with it. And there it is. So let's see, let's find one that's maybe a little bit bigger. Um, you know, I could probably use that flat tip. That might This might be a little much, but I might I could use that flat tip I was using earlier. So let's get some of the moisture out of that. All right, looking good. So then I can just go through. It's easy to get caught up in detail quick. Like right off the bat, you'll want to start adding in like little things like, oh, I see he's got like belts and all sorts of stuff going on and I want to add the colors to that. But it's really important just to get that first base layer on so you have that history underneath of it. Um, you can go whatever color you want on top of it, but just start with that base layer. Now I'm getting to this part that is maybe a little more difficult because it is underneath the cape. Hmm. How am I going to get that? I might be able to get in there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's working well enough. Get a little more paint. Help it spread a little more. And it's okay at this point if you paint something and it like spreads to where it's not supposed to be. Again, this is just the first layer. You're going to go over it with something else. So, 
And this is just to get some color down. We cover this big old thing on his back. Doing the underside. Now the underside, I know I'm not going to get super detailed with. And it's hard to get to a lot of this. So I've actually watered down the paint a little bit. Just so it can help me flow into areas that might be hard to reach. There we go. Get the tip of his shield, or his, uh, not the shield, the, uh, his cape. Alright. He's got, looks like he's got a little bit of that fur on. He's got the boots with the fur. He is not wearing any pants, so he's unfortunately not wearing the apple bottom jeans. I almost forgot like the head part. He's wearing that bear skin right over his head as a headdress. There's one little spot I'm trying to get. There we go. There we go. Looking good. All right. So that's him as of now. And it is 12:30, so I gotta get going. Um. So so far we were able to get this one started, and we were able to finish off this one. He's a little top heavy. <laughs> so he is nearly ready I guess I still have to attach his little sword that we also painted um, to his back but uh, with that uh, I think that is going to be the end of this live stream thank you all for joining in um, I hope you have a wonderful Friday a wonderful uh, weekend I hope you all stay safe stay healthy um, and we will see you back on Monday have a great day.